I joined the hunt for Kony here in the jungles of Central Africa. Tracking him with a team of soldiers from the Ugandan People's Defense Force, or the UPDF. In village after village, I found evidence of the atrocities committed by Kony's child soldiers. This woman's lips were cut off by children in Kony's army, punishment for her son passing information about the LRA's attacks. It was just one of many examples I would see of the cruelty inflicted by one of Africa's most wanted men. He has some experience on how to, to elude forces, how to uh, disperse, disappear, hide. He, he knows all these, all these tactics and uh, it, it's not easy to get him. I was the first journalist to be allowed to join this long and grueling manhunt in this vast stretch of bush. Kony had just attacked a village not far away, and the trackers were quick to pick up his trail. How many people passed this way? Here it is about 80. The soldiers tracking Kony march in silence from dawn till dusk, rarely drinking any water, resting only a few minutes every few hours, for months or even years on end. Squad leader Captain Muhammad rarely leaves the bush or sees his family. The work of these soldiers and the devastation caused by the man they're hunting is only now attracting worldwide attention. We are going to make Joseph Kony a household name, not to celebrate him, but to bring his crimes to the light. 100 million people have now watched this half hour video clip, an internet sensation that may have ushered in a whole new genre of activism, slick celebrity endorsed video and built to go viral. This is, the, this is the guy, Joseph Coney. He's the bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> Everything in my heart told me to do something. And so I made him a promise. And we are also going to do everything that we can to stop them. Okay. Do you hear my words? You know what I mean? Yes. Hmm? Yes. But while many have been moved by the video, and few can doubt the importance of stopping Joseph Kony, questions have emerged over the accuracy of the piece. And some have even questioned the motives of the group that produced it. Is this the new way to move the world to action? Here's ABC Cecilia Vega. And the critics are weighing in heavily on Facebook, too, raising questions about the faith-based group behind the movie and whether the money they're raising is going directly to the children of Uganda. How much of the money raised will really be used to help arrest Kony? And does the message here present a paternalistic and oversimplified take on a decades-long and complex problem for Central and East Africa? We made it oversimplified on purpose, you know. Steve Jobs, you know, said uh, simplicity is the highest form of sophistication and it's really hard to make something simple and we worked really hard to make it simple. So we're proud that it's simple. Simple but indisputably effective. We, quote, congratulate the hundreds of thousands of Americans who have mobilized to respond to this unique crisis of conscience. There are more people who have responded in one week to this crisis of conscience than live in the entire nations of Uganda and the Central African Republic combined. But all that attention means little in the bush itself. The campaign is a world away. For the soldiers on the ground, there's just a sense that they're always one step behind the LRA.
We could feel that here, when we found a camp where Connie had slept just two nights earlier. When you see them preparing a dish like a, this chicken, that means uh, they have a commander. This is for commander, and the commander slept around here. Joseph Kony's reputation here is not just for his jungle tactics. He's known throughout East Africa as a powerful witch doctor. The soldiers tell me that Kony is able to hear conversations 500 kilometers away. Many still believe he can make his men invulnerable to bullets by smearing oil on a soldier's chest. Most of his lieutenants take it as gospel that he can control nature itself. But not all the soldiers are under Kony's spell. The LRA have chosen this terrain to hide out in for a reason. It's grueling, it's vast, and when it rains, footprints get washed away and visibility decreases. The soldiers are on edge, and whenever night falls, the threat of ambush grows. Near the end of my time with the UPDF, we hear that another tracking unit has rescued two young girls, abandoned by the LRA when they could no longer keep up the march. Joseph Coney seems to know whenever the men tracking him are gaining ground. He goes to great lengths to confuse his trail. The LRA will weave unpredictably, crossing the same river back and forth and splintering into smaller groups to throw the UPDF off the trail. Have you lost the track? No, no, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't. Because as they were crossing the river, they scattered. But uh, I heard they have communicated that they have now got it united all together. So we keep tracking? We keep tracking. We came across clear signs that it was indeed Coney himself up ahead, the tattered clothes of one of his abducted girls, and a notebook. This is speech by Coney, and one of the, those who attended the speech uh, managed to uh, copy it or write it down. And uh, in the document, he's trying to encourage his fighters uh, to be courageous, that uh, period for them dying in, in the battle has already ended. This notebook is a glimpse into Kony's mind, and it had a visible impact on the trackers. They felt closer than ever, and they wanted to keep moving. But I had seen enough to understand how this cat and mouse game continues. Kony's real magic is the ability to keep his men believing that they will win a war without clear battle lines or objectives, and the Ugandan soldiers believing that Kony is just over the horizon and that they will soon be home. The men who rescued the two girls had moved through the night to join our force. <laughs> Mary and Teresa Abba were abducted by Kony's men when their village was attacked the week before. They were sexually assaulted and then forced to begin their long march. <laughs> The girls had had a lucky escape. The soldiers wanted to make sure that Kony wasn't as lucky. Uh, 
Good luck, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you. This was my last view of the soldiers as they took up the trail again. As we took off, the last of my confusion about why Coney has not been captured disappeared. The jungle seemed even more vast than when I first flew over it. It's easy to see how Coney can disappear under any tree, into any river, under any rock, leaving his men and the jungle to cover his escape while he lives to fight another day. I wonder now whether any of this will change, now that the world's attention has been so suddenly galvanized, or whether the internet sensation that has everyone talking about Coney will come and go, while the grueling hunt in Africa's jungle grinds on.